Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone, live here. Day three coverage, I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. VMworld 2017, we're in the VM Village for wall-to-wall -wall coverage of VMworld. Our next two guests, Eric Kalberg, who's the Senior Director of Cloud Solutions, and Jason Chemerick, who's the Senior Assistant Director of Peak 10. Um, guys, welcome back. Infinidat, you guys are doing great. Absolutely, it's been a wonderful year We for were just us. talking on camera, got surprised when we kind of went live. Day three, um, and we were just talking about Infinidat's history and the growth you guys have, and just kind of the DNA of the company, how you guys have, how you guys attack the accounts and the kind of profile storage as you go after, and it's just, you're disruptive, but you're not doing anything super radical technically, you just come in blocking and tackling with storage solutions for big industrial clients. Give us this update. Absolutely, I mean, I, I'd say that the disruption is in two areas. One, it's in how we're approaching the clients and where we're going in the data center. You know, most typical disruptors would start at the edge and eventually get to the core, but Infinidat's modus operandi from day one was let's start in the core and then broaden the aperture. So we're out there displacing VMAX, we're out there displacing you know legacy storage arrays that are used for tier one workloads from day one, and that strategy has worked out great for us with 260% year over year growth just this past quarter. It's been a wild ride. So one of the things that people may or may not know is that uh, you know this whole scene here at VMworld is all about disruption. Oh, the computer industry is thrown upside down. You guys have a very simple approach. Come in and just get a better price performance, more bang for the buck, if you will, but really deliver some of that core storage. Can you just take a minute to elaborate on that specific point? Absolutely. So the storyline is really about commodity hardware paired with awesome software that makes all the difference versus the traditional architectures. So what we do with our combination of flash and DRAM and high capacity hard drives allows us to make sure that the workloads are in the right place at the right time all the time. And that means, um, that means something transformational for our large scale clients. And the challenge that we see is versus all the other startups in this space or the smaller companies in this space that ultimately you have real challenges doing that at scale unless you have the intelligence and the expertise that our three generations of storage leadership have really brought together. So Jason, I wonder if we could bring uh, uh, Peak 10 and ViOS, the recently, recent merger, but bring you into the, to the conversation. Maybe talk about briefly your company and, and your role. Yeah, sure, so uh, Peak 10 and ViOS, we're a um, hybrid IT company. We specialize in co-location and uh, cloud services and we, package that in with uh, managed and professional services. Um, so uh, we were looking for uh, a way to consolidate a bunch of the dedicated client arrays that we had out there. Um, and we needed a, a good shared solution that offered high performance that we could throw a bunch of different workloads onto. Uh, we evaluated a bunch of flash arrays um, and other hybrid arrays and um, Infinite that just happened to outperform pretty much everything that we uh, benchmarked. And, and your role is to look after the, that infrastructure. Yeah, so we currently we have 11 Infinibox arrays ranging from the 1000 series up to the 6000. Uh, we have about four petabytes of uh, physical space and uh, almost 10 petabytes of uh, virtual space. So before we get into the environment, we want to do that. What are the, I mean as a service provider, obviously SLAs are super important. Um, you've, you, you, you're you merging companies so you got a bunch of different infrastructure, you're yep. going to have to deal with that down the road, but like a lot of service providers, you mentioned so you wanted to consolidate things, um, you are probably servicing different workloads with different types of infrastructure, uh, but what are the big drivers in, in your business? You know, cloud obviously, the big, the big wave is here. What are the things that are, that are driving your business that affect IT specifically? Uh, so one of the things is uh, we want our clients to be able to get to market faster. So with the Infinibox, the uh, implementation and configuration of it is extremely simplified over some of the other storage products that we've used in the past. So we were able to get our clients up to speed. Uh, they start to use the infrastructure sooner. And uh, the, the, the performance benefit is amazing. So we have, uh, we've actually had testimonials from clients that have put their workload uh, that they had residing on other vendor uh, products. As soon as we put them on even a shared in Infinibox, not even a dedicated, but a shared Infinibox with other workloads running, they've seen as much of a, as a five to 800% improvement in uh, application performance. So paint a picture. What, what, uh, paint a picture of your environment, at least the part that you're responsible and have visibility on. You know, what's it look like? I mean, 
kind of workloads, you know, servers, storage, capacities, I mean, get whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah, sure, so we, uh, we I, I'm, my, my group is responsible for, um, so I work on a, um, a platform engineering team and we're responsible for the infrastructure and code that, that make up our client center cloud offering. Okay. Um, and that is based on uh, VMware and, um, and the Infinibox. So we have a, uh, a mixed workload. We have uh, clients that have physical uh, servers connecting that, that run uh, Oracle Rack installations. Uh, they'll have uh, you know, Hadoop clusters, S large SQL servers, whether that's uh, you know, normal OLTP or analytical workloads, in addition to large and small VMware deployments. And we just run that all, all together on the same unit and no, but there's no hot spots. Are you virtualizing Rack? Um, I don't believe so. We may have some, so yeah, but it's not it's, it's not uncommon that people. Yeah, don't. I, so I can tell you, we do have some virtualized SQL Server clusters out there, along with physical. Um, you name it, we we have it out there. Okay, so take us back to pre Infinidat. What was what was life like? Why, you know, what, what was the conversation like with Infinidat? You know, small company comes in knocking at your door. Sure, hey, so I got an array to sell you. What was your, yeah, so yeah, the, take us through that story. So basically the process, yeah, we, we, we ended up with a, with a, like I mentioned before, we ended up with a lot of uh, dedicated arrays for clients. Uh, I think at one point we're uh, over 70 dedicated arrays. 70? Yeah. Okay. So that becomes a kind of a management nightmare when it comes to patching and things like that. But e even before we get to how we got that many for each individual client, we try and talk to them, take a look at their workload, and then from that we would have to model you know, what kind of RAID groups we need, how many disks within those RAID groups. So the, there was a lot of consulting time involved in getting the, you know, the correct uh, configuration for them. Uh, with, with moving to the Infinibox, we don't have that problem. It, it, you know, we don't have an option to do different types of RAID groups. Everything just works within the uh, infrastructure that's there. So we saved a ton of time having to uh, you know, do all that consulting uh, work beforehand. That also adds to you know, quicker time to market for our clients. So you essentially consolidated a large number of arrays down to an Infinibox infrastructure, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so we have, uh, like I said before, we have 11, we have those scattered across uh, you know, multiple, multiple locations. Okay, and, and the, 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 big, the biggest impact was what, time? People time, or? Time. Um, there's less time for, for deployment configuration. Uh, we spend less time looking at performance problems, so we have more time to, fo to focus on the more important things. So, um, you know, we, we do a lot of uh, monitoring and things like that for, the, uh, for these arrays now. So we do you know, trending and everything. We have time to actually put forth for those, creating those scripts and those infrastructures. So could you talk about performance? I mean, Eric, you could maybe address this too. Y y in in Infinidad has basically said, look, you don't need an all flash array. Uh, we can deliver a little bit of flash and a lot of spinning disk and work our algorithmic magic and deliver better performance than, than an all flash array. Am I summarizing your point of view correctly? You got it, exactly. I mean, we would say that the all flash array movement is great for certain workloads, but by and large for the 80, 90% of common data center environments, it's just a way to make storage expensive again. Okay, <laughs> here, here, <laughs> come to the party. Okay, and, and so Jason, from your experience, can you talk about the performance? Did you look at uh, other you know, all flash alternatives or, or other alternatives to Infinidat? Yeah, so we actually started looking at all flash arrays to start off with because we knew that that you know with the cloud type uh, infrastructure we we're going to be putting all these varied workloads on there, uh -huh. um, and we tested several uh, flash arrays. We we benchmarked those when we get them in, and we actually saw more consistent and better performance across all those workloads from the Infinibox. And um, as you know, with the the flash, you 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 pay a lot for a much smaller amount of uh, capacity. So that was a problem too. So from a cost uh, perspective and performance perspective, the, the Infinibox pretty much beat out all the uh, competitors. I, I'm sorry if I missed this. How much capacity are you managing? So right now we have uh, four petabytes of uh, physical, about uh, 10 petabytes of uh, uh, virtual. And, and how many people manage that? Uh, there's probably just a handful of people. Um, and it, it's basically set it and forget it. So it's arms and legs. I mean, you're not yep. like constantly tuning and yeah, we don't have to do any of that stuff. It's, it's optimized from the start. And, and that was obviously different prior to the installation of Infinidat, or? Uh, yeah, yeah, before there was a lot of, uh, you know, like I said, tweaking of, uh, of disk configurations and storage pools and, uh, you know, cache settings and things like that. So there, there was a lot more uh, hand-holding. So 
What'd you do with all that time that you freed up? I mean, what, are the, what did you do with that labor resource? Where did you point it? Um, we, we, we put that into our uh, you know, analytics and, uh, and monitoring platform on the back end, so we, we create a lot of scripts to, uh, to help us kind of trend uh, capacity and performance for the uh, infinite box arrays. So Eric, Eric, I want to ask you the final question for me, is that the story I'm hearing at VMworld is that as you do more of these projects, some of the costs kind of add up. Of course. Where are you guys seeing kind of the, the opportunity to come in, stabilize operations from storage standpoint, free up that time, which sounds like the great <laughs> That's always a great value proposition. Reduce steps and save time and money. But where is the action happening where the costs start to get out of control when people start thinking about true private cloud, hybrid cloud? Where's the, where's the hot spots that customers should look at saying, if you don't be careful, that's going to blow out of control in terms of costs? I personally think it's all about scale at some level, whether you're thinking about a large scale public cloud deployment or whether you're thinking about you know, collecting, going from five all flash arrays to 50, let's say, that's when the, the cumulative costs grow at an exponential rate. And that's the opportunity for companies like Infinidat successfully bringing these multi-petabyte architectures to fruition while, man uh, while managing all the labor costs and all the implementation costs and operational costs. So, so vSAN's been growing like crazy, for instance, take that as an example. Those things can add up in price. How do you guys compare to say vSAN? So head to head against vSAN at scale, there, there is no comparison, frankly. Whether you're looking at you operational guys benefit over them or uh, them? Yeah, okay. definitely us over them. You know, when we look at multi-petabyte scale deployments, of which there are relatively few in the market today, um, you have so much investment. One customer quoted $12 million to do what Infinidat could do for two million with a, a comparing against the vSAN base. I'm kind of skeptical on those numbers. I'd like to see, that's a huge delta. So we have to kind of follow up on you that. You have to that, see it to believe it. I mean, it. that's a $10 million Absolutely. savings. Absolutely, absolutely. You're saying that you guys are <laughs> going to save $10 million off the vSAN number. In terms of TCO, when you look at, again, it's it's not the cost yeah. of the hardware or even necessarily the software so much, but it's the cost of the implementation, it's the opportunity cost versus all of the innovation, like he was mentioning previously, that really eats into the overall budget for the Okay, so let's go to the customers. Okay, that's a good value proposition. Puts a stake in the ground. Good order of magnitude in terms of solar system of value, right? Two, 10, two versus 12, that's significant. How does that play out in reality when, when you think about those kinds of numbers? Where's that savings coming from? Just the box deployment, the consolidation, where's it, where's it coming uh, it's, from? It's pretty much all over. You know, we're, we're able to, uh, so, uh, part of the cost uh, savings that we have too is w once you have all those uh, a large number of individual arrays, you've yeah. got to uh, re up on maintenance costs and things like that. So we're able to have a much lower number of arrays to service that, that same workload. We save there, uh, we save on man hours for configuration, for performance troubleshooting, and things like that. So across the board, you know, we're saving on, uh, on, on time for our employees. Awesome. Eric, Jason, thanks so much for sharing. Bold statement, a huge. <laughs> Stake in the ground, Absolutely. good job, you guys are aggressive, and hey, lower prices and faster performance is what people want. Absolutely. So congratulations. Finidat here inside theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, back with more live coverage, day three of three days of coverage after this short break, back from VMworld 2017.